ITN World News Next with TVS News at 10.15. Only the electricity bill. Don't know what we're paying for. Around the clock and across the nation. Energy for life. When the day starts a little too soon And you feel you can sleep till noon He knows what it will take to get you away Maxwell House. Get the taste, get the max. If you'd like your cooking to go in a more exciting direction, take a look at what's cooking. Discover new ideas like fresh pasta and sauces for each shape. Classic Chinese dish, Peking duck, and how honey makes the skin crispy. Masterclass explores new ways with old favorites like lamb. It even takes you through planned menus. It can help you conquer anything. What's cooking? A feast of ideas. To go the same distance as one set of Duracell, you'd expect to have to replace ordinary SP batteries. But how many times? Twice? Three times? In fact, in this continuous test, Duracell outlasts ordinary batteries over five times. Duracell lasts even longer than you thought. Here's something to celebrate. Half-price books on everything from puff pastry to pop music. All from the same shop that sells drawing pins. W.H. Smith. The Comet sale is now on. You know where to come. Enter the new year of TVS drama. For the two Mrs. Grenvilles, it's the start of a family war. We both know that there's no love between us, so why are you doing all this for me? Because you are now my daughter-in-law. I'm a social client. Is that what you think? Yes. It's a war of wits and nerves for the new recruits in Wish Me Luck. They seem to get younger all the time. Time doesn't change the master of crime, Poirot. Fortunately for the human race, most of us have our own little policeman up here. And in every policeman, a scholar, Inspector Morse. Like Laius on the road to Thebes. I don't suppose you remember much of your Greek, eh, Morse? Where Oedipus killed his father. Inspector Morse, starting a new season of drama next Wednesday on TVS. And a very good evening to you. This is TVS. In 20 minutes, Wednesday's movie premiere is top secret after TVS News. But now at 10 o'clock, the world news with Sandy Gore. Pan Am victims go home as it's 
confirmed it was a bomb. Angers Mr. Miller says some doctors claim a fisherman's stories. The trade war turns nasty, America penalizes some European imports, and the operation these boys need but can't afford. Good evening. Exactly one week after the Pan Am jumbo jet crashed in Scotland, investigators say they have conclusive evidence that the plane was blown up by a bomb. They say they've found traces of a high-performance plastic explosive in the luggage hold. They don't know yet what sort of bomb was used or how it was placed. The Air Accident Investigation Branch say there's no doubt Pan Am's Jumbo Jet Flight 103 was brought down by an explosive device. The trail of wreckage on the ground shows the bomb went off soon after the aircraft crossed the Scottish border at 31,000 feet. The statement from crash investigators came from a press conference arranged late this afternoon. It has been established that two parts of the metal luggage pallets framework show conclusive evidence of a detonating high explosive. The explosives residues recovered from the debris have been positively identified and are consistent with the use of a high performance plastic explosive. From what you've heard, you'll understand that this operation has developed into a criminal inquiry of international dimensions. Inquiries are ongoing throughout the world. These inquiries are wide ranging and amongst others involved the Federal Bureau of Investigation and the anti-terrorist branch of the Metropolitan Police. They are still removing major parts of the wreckage embedded throughout the town. Here, one of the Jumbo's engines, logging where each part fell. And they are still clearing out the back gardens of the town, the houses shattered by the aircraft falling out of the sky. There's now some doubt over whether ordinary household insurance will cover damage due to a terrorist bomb, but there's no doubt about the anger of the American relatives here after hearing the news about the bomb tonight. I would uh, prefer that we took uh, military action, and uh, as they say in the movies these days, to terminate with extreme prejudice. The people of Lockerbie also felt anger. Oh, I think it's dreadful, the whole thing. There hasn't been a Christmas in Lockerbie, and nobody wants to talk about it, I don't want to talk about it. I was right underneath it when it went over, you know? The crash teams left under police escort tonight to continue their investigations. David Chater, News at 10 in Lockerbie. The clues to the cause of the crash didn't come from the most easily accessible pieces of wreckage, such as the tail and the aircraft's nose. Separated from the rest of the plane, the nose showed no signs of being blown off by a bomb or of breaking away because of structural failure. Only when smaller wreckage from the baggage holes was examined did it become clear there had been a bomb. Scientists found traces of explosive residue on some of the remains, but they've not yet identified which of the two luggage holes contained the bomb. Experts say an explosion in either hold could have destroyed the plane. But the most vulnerable area was in the nose, the hold close to the main electronics bay. An explosion next to the avionics would have caused the instant power failure which was shown on the flight recorders. The conclusion of the accident investigators has removed one worry from the world's airlines, concerned that their fleets of jumbo jets might be suffering from a previously unknown structural problem. Now the investigation will intensify into whether inadequate airport security at Frankfurt, where the flight began, or at Heathrow, failed to stop the terrorists and whether it needs to be strengthened. It's absolutely vital that it's established how this explosive got on board. More could always be done at civilian airports to improve security. It just depends on how much security civilian passengers are prepared to undergo because security costs money and it costs time and it costs convenience. To ensure the instant destruction of the airliner, the terrorists would have wanted their bomb in the forward cargo hold. To achieve that for certain, they'd have needed help on the ground. Police are investigating whether they could have had an accomplice amongst baggage handlers or catering staff. As the first five bodies from Pan Am 103 arrived in New York today, attention was focused on who was responsible for the disaster. Republican leaders on Capitol Hill demanded a massive investigation and reprisals against any country found to have helped those who did it. At the State Department, officials said there could be a reward of $500,000 for anyone providing information leading to an arrest. We are determined to get to the bottom of this and to find out who did it using all available U.S. resources. 
But FBI Director William Sessions cautioned that catching the culprits, terrorists or criminals would not be easy. I have to be optimistic, but it's a gigantic problem that all of us would understand. Three groups have claimed responsibility. The only one named so far is the pro-Iranian Guardians of the Islamic Revolution. The State Department say the bomb warning they received in Helsinki was a hoax, although some victims' families are suing the U.S. government and Pan Am. But legal experts say proving willful negligence may be impossible. President-elect George Bush returns from his Christmas holidays tomorrow. He'll face pressing and difficult questions about what action he'll take if the Pan Am bombers are identified. Tim at News at 10, Washington. Here, junior doctors campaigning for shorter hours have angrily rejected a suggestion by the health minister, Mr David Meller, that they've been exaggerating the problem. Doctors at the London hospital spoke of colleagues falling asleep during operations. Mr Meller said that had the whiff of a fisherman's story about it. Tonight, Labour's shadow health minister, Ms Mar Harriet Harman, warned Mr Meller's refusal to listen will cost lives. These junior doctors coming towards the end of their Christmas protest about having to work in excess of 80 hours a week were horrified to hear Health Minister David Meller accuse them in radio interviews this morning of exaggerating their claims. He said some examples the doctors were citing were fishermen's stories. It's absolute rot. Because it happened to myself, it happened to a lot of my colleagues. I was actually operating, well, assisting an operation. I was holding the tractors back. And, um... I was standing on a stool, so I'm not that tall, and I fell backwards. I lost control, I mean, I fell asleep momentarily. Although I could have woke up and could have went back, they sent me out because I, obviously I was too tired to carry on. I've been working the last three days. Last year in Birmingham, there was a doctor who killed a baby with an overdose of a drug. And uh, over the past four weeks, we, we've had so many stories from doctors about mistakes. One doctor who fell asleep during an operation, found, woke up to find himself lying on top of a patient. Mr. Meller agrees that many junior doctors are working too many hours, but not all of them, as his latest protest suggested. He said that government and health authorities were working together to ensure that as quickly as possible, excessive duties where patients could be put at risk were phased out. We too think they have to work too long. We too have asked health authorities to try to make arrangements so that junior doctors don't have to work such long hours. We say, for instance, they shouldn't have to work more than one night in three or one weekend in three. Bearing in mind that when we talk about work, we're talking not just about hours that they are actually working, but hours that they are on call. The protest ended with the young doctors satisfied their efforts had brought the problem more into the public eye. Mr Meller said the solution everybody wanted must and could be found by the health authorities. They in turn say the government must let them have more doctors. Jeremy Hans, News at 10, East London. The European community is on the verge of a trade war with the United States, which could cost hundreds of millions of pounds. From Sunday, the common market will ban imports of all American meat produced with growth hormones because of an alleged health risk. The United States denies the meat is dangerous and says it will retaliate by imposing sanctions on a wide range of European foods. The Americans give their livestock five types of hormone to increase the animal's bulk, to beef up the beef. European consumer groups have opposed the additives because of health scares linking excess hormones to cancer. But some scientific evidence supports the U.S. producers' claim that there's no danger. Our food is safe. There's no question about that. The uh, World Health Organization has, the Codex Alimentarius has stated that this ban has no scientific basis whatsoever. We are imposing that ban since the consumers in Europe are asking for that. Since a number of years, there has been pressure in the community from the consumers, also from the European Parliament, asking the authorities to guarantee that the meat which they get offered is free of hormones. In retaliation, the Americans are slapping a 100% import tax on a range of EEC products. Italian and German goods will be hit hardest, with British foods hardly affected. Officially, the United States is trying to play down the affair. Please let me say, it's not a trade war. It is a dispute but we will do $166 billion worth of business in two-way trade, goods and services between the United States and the community. And that's a very large amount. What we're talking about here is a relatively very small amount of meat. But there are fears of a growing tit-for-tat trade war. The common market's already said it'll counter-retaliate, and the following step might be a U.S. ban on all EEC meat, and that's 200 million pounds worth of business.
Parents of children born with a rare ear disorder are appealing for help from the health service. One in 10,000 children has Treacher Collins syndrome. An operation costing £2,000 is available, but not on the NHS. Luke and Simon Moore, perfectly ordinary, lively little boys, apart from the disorder which caused them to be born with malformed facial bones, no ears and therefore deafness. Though with the inner ear still intact, they can hear something through bone conduction hearing aids attached to headbands. And like brothers everywhere, they argue. Their parents had a support group for other sufferers and are leading the campaign to get the NHS to pay for the operations which would massively improve their children's lives. It's such an important operation for our children. It's, you know, they're, they're going to look like normal children. What hope have you of winning this campaign? We're very hopeful because it's going to mean a life, the difference between a life of misery or norm normality for the boys. The National Deaf Children's Society paid for Keith Gilbert's operation. After years of headbands and embarrassingly unstable stick-on ears, he now sports lifelike silicon ears, and his hearing aid has been permanently implanted into the inner ear bone. Well, they look like the real thing. They feel like it, apart from it's a bit hard. They stay on. Keith's mother, Penny, suffers from the disorder too. She's now saving up to have the operation herself. Vernon Man News at 10, Berkshire. Soccer, one result, Barclays League, Division 4, Lincoln 3, Doncaster 1. Finally, a racehorse belonging to Prince Charles has failed a dope test. Devil's Elbow was tested after winning a race at Worcester three weeks ago. Three banned substances were found and feedstuffs from the trainer Nick Gaisley stables are being analysed. That's it from us. Good night. From the newsroom of TVS, the late news for the South. Good evening. A schoolboy scientist who received six life sentences after a bombing campaign has been found hanging in his prison cell at Portsmouth. 28-year-old Thomas Lascelles was discovered by officers at Kingston Prison today. He'd been jailed in 1978 after sending parcel bombs to supporters of legal abortion. Lascelles, who was 17 at the time, had made a sophisticated bomb triggered by a light-sensitive cell. He later sent a gift-wrapped bomb at Christmas to a charity for crippled children. The coroner has been informed. There's been a big drop in the number of drunk drivers on the South Roads this Christmas, according to figures released today. That's despite the fact that far more motorists were breathalyzed, Graham Simmons reports. Police here in the South were promising a higher profile this year, and they've been true to their word. Officers in the Thames Valley tested more than a thousand motorists, almost twice last year's figure, but they actually found fewer drivers had been drinking, a 7% reduction in positive tests. In Dorset and Wiltshire, the picture was similar. Overall, a 50% increase in the number of tests carried out, but a 3% drop in arrests. Hampshire police haven't yet released their drink drive figures. An elderly Hampshire couple may not be allowed to live in their dream retirement home because of a planning row with their local council. Bill Borman and his wife built a home behind the chemist shop they run for 30 years at Whitchurch. Now they're being told they must sell their three-year-old retirement home with the business. I've got to sell the house and the uh, pharmacy itself and my wife's retirement home. This I'm simply not prepared to do. But former master of the rolls, Lord Denning, was born above the shop. He's now promised to help the couple in their fight. Hundreds of seabirds are being killed by an oil slick off the Sussex coast. Dozens have already been washed up on the shoreline. The RSPCA are mounting a big rescue operation at a sanctuary in Sussex. Many of the birds are being saved, but some are too polluted to survive. The chances of this bird survivor are not good indeed. In fact, we've got to make up our minds whether it's fair to put it through all that stress of cleaning, which can take up to an hour and a half in a case like this, particularly as the bird seems a little thin, and the chances are we would have to put this, regrettably, have to put this bird down. Six birds a day are being cleaned using hot water and washing up liquid. A couple from Hampshire who are both completely deaf have just had their first baby and Adam Miller can hear perfectly. Melanie Bradley reports. Donna and Anthony Miller are just like any parents thrilled with their brand new son. Except they will never hear their baby cry. 
That doesn't mean one month old Adam has any trouble alerting his parents to his needs. Anthony and Donna have rigged up special alarms that flash a light every time he starts to yell, so they can share all the joys of parenthood, including the disturbed nights. And now for a look at tomorrow's weather, here's Carl Tyler. Good evening. Well, the winds are a lot lighter this evening. That's going to bring problems for the next few nights at least. Watch out, round dawn tomorrow, some patchy fog in the lower lying areas. Now, if we have a look at the chart for noon tomorrow, you can see high pressure, isobars well apart, so quite light winds, big bulge of warm air coming up from the Canaries. So tomorrow morning then, it's going to be a dull grey misty start to the morning, but it will brighten up as we go through the morning for the afternoon. I think a fair amount of sunshine around, particularly inland. By then, your winds just a light southerly. Your best temperatures are very mild, 11 Celsius. So to summarise then, it's going to be dry, misty at first, brightening up with sunny spells by lunch. And that's all from the TVS newsroom for the moment. Chris Peacock will be with you at 5 to 10 tomorrow morning. In a few moments on TVS, movie comedy in the spy spoof Top Secret. That's next. Do you wish you had the know-how to tackle imaginative cooking? Now, Pruleith brings you Confident Cooking, a step-by-step -step guide that grows with your confidence. You should try my Chinese stir-fry, new beef casserole, and my ice bowl. Now you're cooking with confidence. Issue one with free binder at your newsagent now. Panasonic have come up with a completely different line of thought on programming the video. The barcode scanning system is so simple, you need never miss the arts, the wildlife, or the sport. It's almost impossible to go wrong, so there's never been an easier way to get a beautiful picture. Video recorders with digital programming from Panasonic. The state of the art. Here, you say 15 pounds, booking at Lum Polly. Get away. This lot went to Lum Polly and got 60 pounds off their holiday. Mm. Get away. You guys come with Lum Polly? Uh-uh. Could have saved yourself 100 pounds. Get away. Oh! Yes, at Lum Polly, we discount every holiday we sell with only £20 to pay now. Get away. Get away for less with Lum Polly. Every Christmas, Guardian Royal Exchange will give you a present. Extra cover for your personal possessions in December and January, free of charge with our select household policy. Because the visitors you get at Christmas aren't always welcome. Guardian Royal Exchange. It's our policy to improve your policy. You've got the pattern, you've got the fabric, but have you got the know-how? Week by week, successful sewing will show you how to make clothes that really fit and really look good on you. Whether you want step-by-step -step instructions or free paper patterns, a whole library of basic sewing techniques or new ideas for dressing your children and brightening your home, successful sewing will give you all the know-how you'll ever need. Part one of successful sewing is on sale now. The most spectacular event of the season is back again. It's the stunning Holiday on Ice show, a sparkling new performance of breathtaking skill and magic. This singing and dancing extravaganza is at the Brighton Centre from the 4th of January to the 22nd, so don't miss it. Call the box office now on Brighton 202 881. The Sweet Shop Superstores are smashing through the competition with sweet, sweets, more sweets, and only three-piece sweets. Thousands in stock, all available for immediate delivery at unbeatable prices, and that's guaranteed. We'll even collect your old sweet and give you, yes, give you, £100 part exchange, and that's a promise. The Sweet Shop Superstores, open seven days a week and late to late Thursdays and Fridays. We lead, others follow. Super value, super choice, at the Sweet Shop Superstore.
Watch out! <laughs> Tomorrow at nine on TBS, Gremlins. One of Britain's most respected rock performers, Joan Armatrading, appears in concert on TBS at 12 o'clock as we begin Late Night Late.